years. He was an informant spilling the secrets of the Chicago mob to the FBI. The story of Red Wimet. I was told by some people at the time that he put out a million dollar contract on my head. Hello, everyone. Today is June 7th, 2023, and we're here to talk about family secrets. And with me is Adam Flowers. Hey, Red. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Here to learn about family secrets trial. Adam, Adam told me he can't wait till I get my internet fixed and get a new internet provider. <laughs> And oh my gosh, the lives are going to be long. so much. I have a show going on uh, with um, uh, Jimmy Calandra on Sunday about wow. in the evening. It's in the evening. But Saturday, they're supposed to be out here to hook me up. So Good. hopefully, Adam, the next time I see you, we won't have the service. <laughs> I do, on Sunday, I'll be watching the show on Sunday live. If I don't have tours to do, which I don't know if I do or not yet, um, but if I don't and I'm not doing, you know, my thing, I'll be watching or I'll watch it afterwards. But it'll be great to see um, you in, you know, with a fast connection. Like right now you look really good, but sometimes you go in and out of 720. So anyway, let's get on to the subject. Red wrote the book, Nobody Cares and What I Did About It. And uh, he infiltrated the Chicago mob. He was a FBI mole, and he uh, knew a lot of these players. So you also testified in the Family Secrets trial. Yes, but it so, started way before I testified. I, okay. I got a phone call from an agent, Tom Moriarty, and Tom knew me from way back in 1972. He called me up. And he said, uh, uh, Mitch Mars wants to talk to you. I said, well, have him give me a call if he wants to talk to me. He said he can't because I was, you know, went into the undercover division of the FBI. He could not reach me. I asked him because we stayed on a personal basis. We're talking all the time. So um, I did. I gave Mitch a call and we talked. And this was back in uh, 2002, 2002. And after we talked, I'd been flying into Chicago every so often, looking at surveillance photographs and other things. And a lot of the people I didn't know, I just didn't know them. Things had changed. But while we were talking, he said he was gonna bring the Spalaccio case. He was gonna resurrect that. He was going to resurrect all these different things. And so he asked me, he said, would you mind talking to my investigators? And I said, uh, are they FBI agents? And he said, yeah. And I said, no, I don't want to talk to him. And so he said, why? And I said, I don't get along with the FBI. And he said, well, these guys you'll get along with. And I did. It was um, Chris Mackey and the other senior agent. I'm trying to remember his name. Anyway, it's not important at this time. But what happened was we went over everything. And then they told me what they were going to do, what they weren't going to do. The people that were going to be indicted. And some obviously pled guilty, like Kirk Calabrese. He was indicted, but... It was, he pled guilty. And a lot of people pled guilty. So in between that time, I talked to Marcus Funk, T. Marcus Funk. I called him Marcus Funk. He had just gotten back from Europe. He was in Sarajevo. Is that Sarajevo? Is that, am I saying that correctly? Sarajevo. Yeah. Oh, in Europe. And he, was a, he was a prosecutor <laughs> over there. <laughs> You're asking the butcher how to pronounce the name of a country that I'm not right. Really, are you fucking out of your mind? There you go. Larry, I, C, I, Larry C, you're, that's a good book. How do you say that word? Hold on. Where the hell is this place, man? Sarajevo. Seri, Seri, what the hell? 
Um, let me, let, let's try some. Hey, Google, how do you pronounce Sarajevo? Sarajevo. Sarajevo. Hold on. Hold on. With a B. Hold on. Hey, Google, how do you pronounce Sarajevo? That's pronounced Sarajevo. Sarajevo. Wow. Wow. That was correct. From Calumet City. Can't say a fucking word right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sarajevo. Ah. Sarajevo. So okay. anyway. All right. so yeah, go on with the story. We all learned something they, new today. Had, he told me that they had called him in from Europe to do okay. this trial. John Scully and Mitch Marsh. Mitch Marsh was a genius. I met him in 1980. And um, he did a lot of organized crime. And he always won. He never lost the case. So this was a big trial coming up. And I didn't realize it. I really didn't. Okay. So I talked to all the prosecutors on the phone. Then they all came down to visit me after the FBI was there. And they wanted to go over different things with me. A very odd thing happened. I had Frank Schweiss's transcripts from the trial at my house. And we were at, a, we met at a hotel and their transcripts were all moldy. They were in the basement. <laughs> they were mold. I mean, they were terrible. They were falling apart. You couldn't read them. And I said, didn't you copy these or something? And he said, no, this is all we could get. And I said, wait a second. I got a, a full copy. And he said, where? And I said, at my house. And I thought they'd come over to the house. And I said, no, 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 go home and get them. So I get in the car, drive over, and I get them, bring them back. And they got a fresh copy of the transcripts. <laughs> they went down to Kinko's and made a copy. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, as it was going along, uh, time passed. And they talked to me like every two or three weeks until the indictments came down in 2005. And that's when everybody knows Frank Schweiss went on the lam. And Joey Lombardo went on the lamb. And there was rumors that there was a possibility that they went to the Bahamas because Frank was down there and he frequently just jumped on a boat and went to the Bahamas. You didn't need a passport. You just go on a boat. But it didn't turn out that way. Frank was uh, arrested in Buena, Kentucky uh, in a furnished apartment. And Joey was arrested in Elmwood Park in the alley in the middle of the night. As a matter of fact, they called me. Each time somebody was arrested, they said, we got him. We got him. We're closer. Right. We're going to be coming up. So the day comes and I go, I go to the trial. Now, Marcus is a very unique person. They're all unique in their own fashion. They really were. And I enjoyed their company very much. But uh, one of the things that uh, was a difficult thing for me was that I was there for two months before the trial and I would go downtown. I was out in the suburbs and I, they picked me up and I go downtown every day. Every day I was in the office up there. And while I was in the offices, it was a bunch of offices all on the same floor. I bounced around to this one, to that one. And it was, it was a, I spent a lot of time there. Now, one of the things that I told Adam about, and he looked it up, and he, I, I think you looked it up and found it, did you not, Adam? About uh, the biggest that? secret? The biggest secret was going to be the Marilyn Monroe. Oh, the Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, that's the big That's the big story today. That's what well, I wanted to hear all about was that. That's well, supposed didn't you to see the article with me? Didn't we both look it up and find the yes, article together? We, yes, we did. Yes, we did. And it's in the Chicago Tribune, I think, is where it was. Chuck right? Gowden did it. Chuck Gowdy did it. He went on yeah. the air and did it. Yeah. He said the biggest family secret is going to be the murder of Marilyn Monroe. Well, Schweiss didn't stand trial because he was ill. He had lymphatic cancer, small cell. He was going to, he was terminal. So he didn't stand trial. So that never came out. It just never came out. The wow. fact that it, you know, it was on the, it was on the menu, but not with him. You know, it had to be with him. He had to be there because he was a principal in the ball. Tony so was right. dead. What surprised me was they had known for years, many years, who killed Tony Spilaccio, who killed Michael Spilaccio, who killed uh, all these different people. 
They knew they couldn't prove it. They couldn't prove it until Frank Calabrese Jr. gave them his uncle, who was a murderer, who turned on his brother, Frank Calabrese Sr., and now they had a family secrets trial. And they called it family secrets because of the Calabrese family. All the Calabreses that were involved in it, three of them. So that's what basically happened. I had some very interesting things happen there. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a guy that uh, he doesn't like me very much. <laughs> uh, he. Uh, oh, we're going to talk about this guy? The courtroom buff. Oh, he we're going to talk there. about this guy? Really? He, he was there every day. He was there every day in the hallway. But, you know, I didn't notice him. I okay. never noticed him. There were so many people there. It was like a circus. The only pe person I noticed was John Drummond. When I was okay. coming up to the courtroom to go into the courtroom, it was a crowd, man. The aisles were clogged. Everything was clogged. And poor John. John Drummond tried to reach up and uh, shake hands yeah. with me or talk to me. They wouldn't let him touch me. The agents were yeah. touch. Didn't they you say they pushed him down? The Did you say he fell down? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They I went like this and knocked story. him down. All right. Let's take some comments uh, quickly. Uh, just to interrupt you for a second, I start a few. Um, Michael Graham, currently Red's internet provider, is from a guy with a ham radio somewhere there in Florida. <laughs> 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 it's about right, Michael. Michael. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Brown. Adam, you and Red helped me with this, uh, the stream of the movie Thief the day my mom passed away. If I ever do meet you, I'm going to give you a big bro hug. And likewise, dude, that's totally cool, man. See, people don't, they, they're like, no, 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 yeah, no, I'm, yeah. Uh, I even gave Red a bro hug when I met Red, didn't I? Yeah. All right. Michael Graham. Up, I, I just got out of the airplane terminal and he went up and he gave me me a big hug and he said you're here you're really here <laughs> <laughs> michael graham everyone saying hello as if we didn't just spend an hour together on adam's channel lol <laughs> <laughs> adam thinks he lives in los vegas yeah no, <laughs> lost wages larry c yeah, wants to know and finally scott h What's here saying here uh, oh. Hold on, Red. Scott H., are uh, we going to see any more tapes from Red's apartment of Frank Schweiss? Yes. Yes, that's coming. That is coming. Uh, I need to um, uh, clean audio. Red has, and Red has to get off his butt and translate him to Adam. Here's, here's the thing. The audio is so freaking hard to understand. But, but Red, you know, I was telling you in Photoshop how I can, like, the, the AI in Photoshop now, how it works. It makes it, it makes me because I'm a I'm a total nerd geek. All right, I get excited about it. It's cool what it's doing. They have audition Adobe Audition in beta testing, and I'm going to see. There's probably some new option in there with AI that'll help clean that. But we'll see. I'm not promising. Uh, Larry C, did you see the Seifert family there, Red? Yes, I did. The, I didn't yeah. talk to them. I saw them. That's all. Now, yeah. afterwards, I talked to them after the trial because they were testifying. Yeah. And I was testifying. Yeah. So we really yeah. didn't want anybody that was testifying. Matter of fact, they gave me a lot of rules that I had to follow. Don't go to the cafeteria downstairs because defense yeah. attorneys can go there, whatever. It was really a trip. It was a circus, a very, yeah. um, it was in the ceremonial courtroom, but it was a very elaborate trial. Very, very elaborate. Yes. That, they shuttle, shuffle, shuttled you around that building, you were saying, through hallways and then putting you in cold rooms. And oh, you said yeah. something about a cold room. Yeah, there were a couple of them. Actually, moving around, uh, when I came in, I'll tell you now, it doesn't make any difference because I don't use it anymore. When I came into the building every morning, I would come in at the post office. The one on Congress Avenue that goes okay. over the expressway, uh, Eisenhower Expressway. I mm -hmm. would come in there. We'd park there. We'd go through a bunch of different hallways and, and stairways and elevators. And every time we did, we had a, they had to push in a coat on the, on the doorway in order right. to get through. 
So there was like maybe 40 or 50 of them that we went through. And over in that building itself, in the post office, there was a safe house. And it was set up. And Chuck Gotti wanted to know where the safe house was. <laughs> he wanted me to tell him where the safe house was. And <clears throat> uh, they were trying to find a safe house too. The mob, or Calabrese was, because they were going to actually try and murder the witness before he took the stand, Nick Calabrese, his own wow. brother. Wow. So it was it was a very touchy subject. When he asked me, he said, do you know where it's at? I said, yeah. And he said, could you tell me? And I said, I don't know if I should. I'll talk to somebody else first. <laughs> and I talked to Mitch and Mitch said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> we got people there. Yeah. Actually, Albert Johnson Rogers was in one of the apartments that's uh, there. They're in a building, big building, but he was in an apartment there and he found out about it. Now he testified against Cafano. He tried to testify against uh, Lombardo twice earlier. My God. And here he's coming to Family Secrets and he was 80 some years old. And wow. he, when he found out about it, he says, I'm not going to no safe house. And he was in Witsec. He was in witness protection, mm -hmm. but he was very upset about it. So, if you're new here, Red wrote the book, Nobody Cares, what I did about it. He testified in the Family Secrets trial. He was a mole for the FBI, infiltrated the Chicago mob, and uh, and wrote the book about it. And uh, I have a couple of comments that I starred here, Red. I'd like to uh, to uh, read to you. Pickle pusher. Uh, Pickle pusher. <laughs> um, okay, so... Luminous Grin gave me a big, big bro hug, too. Yeah, Luminous Grin came out here, did the crime tour and the mob tour. And, uh, yeah, you could give uh, uh, Luminous Grin a big bro hug. No kiss, though. No kiss, Luminous. Makes you really disappointed. Brian Glade, Adam, would you ever pick up a hitchhiker wearing a purple suit? Only if she was blonde. Scott H., how big was the courtroom? How big was the courtroom, Red? About twice the size of a normal courtroom. It was huge. Yeah. Actually, okay. the, the gallery on the one side were witnesses and um, family members that were right. victims of families. They were up in like a bleacher setting over on the right behind the defendants. And the other thing, it was like you had to take a number. Literally, you had to take a number to get in. Wow. And if you gave up your seat on a break, you know, when the judge took a break? Yeah. And you left, you didn't get your seat back. They just, you know, oh. next, next, next. Because there were people yeah. in line in the hallways yeah. every day, every day. And it was a long, drawn out trial. Very long. Jesus. Um, okay. A couple more. This is a. Uh... Regarding the uh, Marilyn Monroe murderer, Blacking, uh, this from Gomp, did they, uh, did the guys who did it in get the, hold on, did the guys who did it get the diary or was that cleaned up by Peter Lawford and her psychiatrist after she was killed? Do you know the, about the diary? They never got anything. All they did was kill her. But Peter did the That's cleanup. Awful. We had Jack on the show, and Jack was Peter's best friend. There was, actually, Peter, before Peter did the cleanup, um, I believe RFK was there. Robert okay. Kennedy was there. And um, I don't know if he cleaned up anything or... So, but it, it, was, it, it was Tony Spilatro and Frank Schweiss who killed her with a hydrochloride suppository. Now, do you want to go down that rabbit hole right now? No pun intended. Did you see what I just did there, Red? I don't mind going down it. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. Red, they <laughs> killed her with a suppository. Do you want to go down that rabbit hole? Holy shit. Do I have to explain the jokes? To My Red screen time? went blank. My internet messed up. I didn't see it. I can't wait until your internet's I didn't fixed. See it, Adam. Maybe he'll start to get my jokes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> All right. Are there any documentaries or footage of the Family Secrets trial? No. 
None. No, there's no. What's the no. deal? They're not allowed. Well, wait a second. Let's talk about this. The thumbnail for this broadcast is of the Family Secrets trial. You know, the court drawings that they do. Okay. Why do they do the court drawings? Is that because you can't take pictures when you're in there or what? Because no I see footage. Of no cameras. No well, what, cell about, phone. What, 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 what about these, these videos where they're like, look at this guy's reaction when he's sentenced to life in prison. And then you watch that video and it's in the courtroom. How the hell did they get those? It's not in a federal court. Oh. Federal courts don't allow it. And some really? states don't allow it, depending on what state you're in. Well, I wonder why. Is there a reason for that? There's got to be a reason. Yeah, it becomes a circus. Like this was. It was a circus. If you would to put the media in there too, and the media wants preference. They want preferential treatment. They want their cameras here, their camera there. They want electricity. They want this. They want that. Right. And the actual spectators don't get what they should have. Got so it. it's really unfair to the general public to have the uh, media in there. But they, when you go through the middle of the house phone, they don't want anything in the building. So, oh man, that you can record or take a picture. But even uh, every every photograph of me that when I was on the stand was done by an artist, an artist's conception. Hey, do you have any of those caricatures of yourself? No, I paid a hundred dollars for Marsha. I forgot what her last name is to goof up one of mine to make it look, you know, distorted. And yeah. I gave her a hundred bucks and. Uh, Afterwards, I couldn't connect with her. I couldn't find her. And uh, I was going to buy it. I was actually going to buy it and keep it. But if I would have kept it, I wouldn't have it anyway. I'd have lost it in Hurricane Michael. <laughs> I lost a lot of things then. A lot of yeah. pictures. Oh, that's just... You should get a caricature, caricature, caricature made of you in the courtroom. That's what your, your monogram should be. I remember what I looked like. I remember what I looked like. Paul Wickham was there. Yeah. Paul Wickham saw me there. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. worked on that too. Sure. He was a, no. He was a law clerk. He was a law clerk. He was a law clerk. He came on the mob tour. He said he loved it. Yes, he did. Yeah. Uh, everything changes when cameras are present. Ex cop. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know. It's it's interesting, you know, like like uh, uh, they always have all the camera crews standing outside the courtroom when people come out. It's like then they get you know bombarded because can't have it in the courtroom. It's too much. Maybe it's too much of a distraction. You know, maybe it's a dist distraction. So it is. It's a major major one. So Brian wants to know whose finger stunk, Tony's or Frank's? <laughs> <laughs> Frank never told me. Come on, Frank that's just funny. That's funny, and Brian. I, I, I'm going to tell you, Brian, uh, the only way I, I, I even know anything about it, that oh, part God. of the world is because Frank Schweiss told me. God. Now, there's some people that say Frank Schweiss never told me anything. Uh -huh. He never sat around and rapped with me. One particular idiot that I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> Oh my God! Back to this guy. Here we go. Anyway, <laughs> Here we go. Uh, there's evidence of it. I mean, Adam's got evidence that Frank sat with me. We played it for you folks. It's on Adam's uh, channel on my blog. I brought him some tapes. So uh, that's about that. Plus, <laughs> if you have. <laughs> If you have live video and found innocent, some, not everyone, will follow the whole case. Plus, they might think they should have been guilty and targeted by the public after the trial. Good point, Nate. Be sure to hit the like button. I don't know if you've ever commented before. I don't know if I've ever read your name before. I don't remember reading it, but hit the comment. Uh, I've seen like Nate button. before. He's a good right, man. Well, awesome. Nate, uh, I want to tell you something else, something I didn't, I, uh, I neglected to say. All the jurors had numbers. They didn't have names. The oh, yeah, that's right. Give them numbers. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's true. Yes, because it's again, you don't want the names of the jurors out there, and you don't want footy video or pictures. Well, they'd be afraid. Or yeah, Bob no, Trello, no, good buddy. point. No, that makes sense, man. That's that makes more sense than any of the other things that have been said so far. <laughs> I asked that question. Why? Why? You know why? There's footage of a car, old Accardo. Michael testing. Graham. Wait, yeah, wait, Mad Attack. There's footage of old Accardo testifying in court. Why wouldn't there be footage of family secrets? No, that was congressional hearing footage, wasn't it, Red? Yes. Accardo. Yes. And then that, yes. that's public, man. That's like, look, at they put freaking, oh. uh, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg in front of the Congress and they put that on, you know, there's, that's to be played. So, yeah, I don't think that it was in court. Although, isn't there, isn't, doesn't Lefty plead the fifth like a million times in a video? In He's in court. That's the hearings, right? That's what hearing. it is. A hearing, got it. Okay. All right. Um, You're right. So. You're right. I, I remember her signature. Michael? Michael Graham? Talking about that the artist? Yes. Yeah, the artist. He's yes, the one that drew the me. Right. She's Marcia Danitis. Dan Danitis? Marcia Danitis? Very Marcia? nice lady. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a congressional hearing. Exactly. Uh, Don Cheech is right on on, on uh, point here. Transcripts are done in the courts, stems, and costs. Lots of the general public who I don't believe can get them. Okay. Um, yeah. She, let me... she would have given it to me. So, so kangaroo, kangaroo court. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, exactly. Fox is guarding the hen houses. Yeah, this is what it is. So, um, <clears throat> wasn't Gianni Russo at the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so. He's not old enough. Oh, my gosh. That's too funny. So, uh, um, Larry C. Larry C. Red. What did Mitch Mars die from in what year? Wasn't it lung cancer? A very, no. A very interesting. Yeah, well, throat cancer. A very interesting is I didn't mention that either. While I was working with Mitch for those two months, he was coughing all the time. He was coughing all the time. And he'd take lozenges and everything else. And he made it all the way through the trial. And he said, Everybody's told him, look, go to the doctor, get it taken care of. Whatever it is, go go get it taken care of. And he wouldn't. He was a bulldog. He was hanging on to this case. It was his life. And God. after the trial was over, he was supposed to call me. But I spoke to his wife. And um, she said he was terminal. God. And uh, I think he died maybe four months after that. So that was in 2008, Larry. That was in 2008. I never talked to uh, Mitch after that or before from, from the trial to the time he died. All right. Chris Pisavento. I think I said that right. Pesavento. Pisavento. Red, did you ever meet Marco D'Amico? Marco to mover. No, I did not. Oh. No. No, I did not. Uh, how about Bugsy? Did I heard Bugsy? of him, but I never met him. How about Bugsy? Did you meet him? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but Red was a waiter at the Last Supper. <laughs> Hussein Bato. <laughs> Red, what did you uh, think of DeVarco? He was a vicious man. A very vicious man. Uh, he ran Rust Street. And he was uh, he was a bad man himself, but he surrounded himself with a lot of muscle. A lot of muscle was around him. Uh, yeah. When he left, when he went to prison, uh, Vince Solano took over for him. That was the Rush Street crew. And I was around those guys when I was way back when in 1968 when I was tending bar. I got to yeah. know all of them. Babe Damani, all those guys. Larry the Hood, <laughs> that's what he called him. So Hood, and I, I we called him Hood. 
But uh, he said, I'm a hoot. <laughs> Sounds like something Dr. Seuss wrote. <laughs> Uh, anyway. What does John Notch has to say? Mm. Uh, John Notch. John Notch says, hi, Red. Uh, and, of course, you as well, Adam. Hey, John. Uh, John Notch, nice to have you around and uh, welcome in here. Hit the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe if you're new here. Uh, we need more Frank Schweiss tapes. We're going to try and we're trying to clean up the, the, um, the audio in it. But I'll tell you, Red's been doing all kinds of, and I've, I've been busier than hell. Um, you're writing another the book, The only time right? we connect is like at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you, you writing another book? I wrote another book in 2017. When's, When's it going to come out? When are you going to put it out? I don't know. I'm really not sure. I, I, I sent the, uh, uh, during COVID, I sent the, uh, cover. I, I wanted to have the cover proof, the new cover. And the book is done. It's already set up for print. What's it about? But, um, What's it about? Everything I didn't put in this book. Okay. Everything I didn't put in this book. It's more okay. elaborate. All right. So nobody cares this what is I more did of about. An outline. This is more of an outline that's like I hit targets. That's all. Okay. Okay. So is, does it have a lot of the Chicago mob? Is it's it all Chicago mob. It it's is. all Chicago mob. Okay, so nobody cares and what I did about it. He's got the book. Uh, if you guys don't have a copy, go buy a copy. Go to redwoodmet.com and uh, pick up a copy. And uh, You get an autographed copy if you go to redwoodmet.com. You can buy it on right. Amazon, but if yeah. you buy it from me, I'll autograph it and send it out to you. And pl please go leave Red a review if you uh, bought it on Amazon. So put a review up there for him. Um, I'd appreciate okay. So uh, I got a few comments starred. And I uh, wonder why Jimmy I wasn't indicted in the family secrets trial. Hussein Bato. Because they didn't have anything on him. No. If they would have had something on him, they would have indicted him. Okay. Some people Hussein. asked me today. Some people asked me today on Facebook. They asked me. Um. Why wasn't there a Family Secrets 2 trial? Several reasons. Number one, Mitch was the catalyst for all this stuff. He passed away. Number two, Schweiss passed away in the same year. And they would have solved a lot of murders with him. Okay. Number three, DeFonzio got ill. John DeFonzio got ill that year. So it was one of those kind of things where it just all fell apart. Gotcha. Yeah. Endangered species, the secret life of a porn shop owner. <laughs> is it was. It, that's gonna be the title. Is that gonna be the title well, of the I next book? A porn shop owner until until uh until I decided to go undercover. I was uh, I didn't open the shop till 1974, and I became a mole in August of 1971. Okay. So it wasn't like I was a porn shop owner and then became a mole. I mean, it wasn't that kind of thing at all. <laughs> I was even encouraged by the FBI to go deeper and deeper and get more involved with the porn. But I was also cautioned. I was cautioned to make sure that there were no children or animals in anything that I sold. And hey, 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 well, there hey, were people who did that sort of thing. Hey, Red. T Tony Spilatro. What did Tony Spilatro say to Frank Schweiss after they murdered Marilyn Monroe? I don't Smell know. Smell my finger. Smell my <laughs> finger. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just That's I had to. That wasn't like Tony. Mm. I my finger. <laughs> Sorry. I had to. Oh, Roy DeMeo. Did I say the name incorrectly? Did I pronounce this wrong? <laughs> what did I do? Somebody's like the writing in here. We're coming up on top there. <laughs> Red's new book, Adam Flowers, Butchering Names and What I Did About It. 
<laughs> Come on. They you want know, you to I'd have to out. amend the book to include Adam in it because I wrote it in 2017. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Sorry. Sharon and I. Frank's mother, Schweiss, was not Sicilian. She was Irish. No. No? No. Sure. Yes. Okay. So um I actually saw her. I, I actually saw his wife, and she was Italian. I don't know if she's Sicilian or not, but um she was Italian. The mother was. Okay. And the father was uh obviously German, but he was also had some Italian in his background. They came from Bridgeport. They grew up in Bridgeport. They gave them Bridgeport. Valmore, this show is going down the tube. You hear that, Red? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I guess um, I'm going down with it. I'm going down with the ship, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like it. Don't watch it if you don't like it. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't watch stuff I don't like. So Now, Morris is a regular like. viewer. He said it's going down waste, hill, so. Why waste your time, man? Life is short. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do stuff you... Okay, oh, you're kidding. Sure. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, you're kidding. kidding all of a sudden. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, Sharon's got a point here. Unless, unless of um, course, unless of course, unless of course, unless of course, Val Moore, and I'm going to give this, was making a joke about going down the tubes, you know, because of the suppository earlier. <laughs> I, could be that that's what it was. So that's all cool. Val Moore, you're all right. No, no rabbit holes allowed. Yes. <laughs> down the gerbil <laughs> tube, Val Moore. <laughs> God. Yeah, I think hey, you know, was, it was. Elmore was trying to be funny. Elmore sure. Elmore was trying to be funny. Leave him alone. Okay. Uh, okay. So nice save, Valmore. Luminous grin. Sitting here going, man, all we've been doing is sitting here laughing, right? Which is just yeah. I mean, to me, what the hell? You know, you gotta have fun. I guess that laughter is good for you too. It brings your blood pressure up and brings it down and it regulates you and it it's good. <laughs> be such a somber life without it now sharon has a comment here sharon uh no you're wrong i know them jesus no sophie was a greek jesus already sharon is very adamant that 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 uh frank schweiss's mother I know them. jesus sophie is so sophie I, Sophie's the mom, I'm guessing. She might have been. All I know is what he told me. All I know is what he okay. told me, Sharon. These are things that he told me. Yeah. Like he used to put a lot of things in his mother's name. The Mercedes he drove. The property that he owned. Things like that. Yeah. But he only told me things. So okay. did I meet her? No. If you did, if you say you knew them, you're probably right. Because I didn't know them. Sure. I knew his daughter. Mad attack. There, but again, it's, it's hearsay. It's what you, you know. And and let's not forget, we've done a whole episode about the, the, the Mandela effect. Sometimes that shit happens, okay? It's possible that you cross the memories up. But mad attack. Did the mob do anything in casinos in the Chicago area like Hammond and Elgin? Did the mob do anything in the casinos in the Chicago areas? I like don't know. Hammond that's way Elgin. after my time. That's way after that, my that's time. That's like, you're talking boat like, boat man, those gambling. casinos, riverboats shit came in in 95, if I'm not mistaken. Because 95, maybe it was 97. No, I think it was 97 because I worked on the showboat Mardi Gras Casino when it first opened in East Chicago, Indiana. And that was, I was 20. So I wasn't even old enough to go on the boat. I was only able to stand in the lobby where the people lined up to get on the boat. And I did magic for them and, you know, was a clown because that's what I <laughs> I No, mom, dad, I want to be a clown, a magician, you know, just like one step above being a mime. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, Holy. hit that like button. I need all your all yeah, the help I can hit get. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe. <laughs> Please. Um, Hammond and Elgin casinos were not in existence in those days that Red was active. It's what, yeah, we were trying to say. That's it correct. Was like, like, yeah. So, Belmore, nobody told me. When I came into town. Nobody told me when you use suppositories, you have to take off the tin foil. Oh, yeah, Valmore. You got to take that tin foil off. You're right. Do you know what I heard from the doctor the other day? That a banana every day, a banana every day, it keep your uh, colon cleansed. I figured out after day oh, three, nice. I figured out after the third day, you're supposed to eat them. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> rugged, very rugged. <laughs> Don Cheech, the Heights and Cal City were already indicted by then. Yeah, yeah. but the time that, that, that the boats came around, I mean, yeah, you know, shit. <laughs> Eighth Elton says, Frank Collado must be laughing. I'll yeah. Bet he is. I'll bet he is. I bet so. Um, Bobby Bag of Donuts, man, you've been working out. You lost 30 pounds. Dude, congratulations, man. That's yes, good for sir. you. It's good for you, man. Your knees, dude. You got to take care of yourself so your knees last. That's that's important. Bobby Bag of Donuts, I want to see you uh, live to be uh, 90. Rhonda, so be careful. If you ever have a colonoscopy, if they get too close to the nerve from your eye, you'll wind up with a shitty outlook. Oh. <laughs> you have a colonoscopy. Oh, so All these rectal the jokes. <laughs> Man, you guys are, I'm telling you, uh, it's just, yeah. <laughs> uh, endangered species, he found the 30 pounds that you lost, Bobby. So, <laughs> yeah. What goes I found around about, comes around. I found five of them. So, yeah, he probably found the rest. Should be Bobby Bag of Carrots from now on. So, I like it, Leanne. Bobby Bag of Carrots. So, Leanne, all right. Along. How you doing, Leanne? It's back to the Family Secrets trial. Let's talk a little bit more about yes, sir. this. Um, or can't, here, Mad Attack, can't tell me some kind of stuff isn't going on in those casinos. I know the connected guys that were still around in the late 90s, 2000s, were running small cafes and running tables at them at night. Uh, at the casino boats? I don't know, man. I, you, dude, all the shit with the casinos, they it's the politicians. Them. The politicians. They're the ones that sat there and voted and said, Hey, yeah, I vote that we should open a casino and legalize that in this state. They're the same ones that took the fucking numbers game from the Bolito from the Chicago outfit. Yeah, we vote. Let's open the Illinois State Lottery. Let's do that in the 60s. Oh, yeah, the, let's let these payday loan places charge just as much on the on the juice as what we, you know, the outfit loan sharks. And then let's let's open casino boats and take Joey Lombardo's floating craps games. It's the politicians. It's the, the the mayor and all those aldermen. That's who's that's who's running all that shit. Adam. Yeah. You said the sixties. You mean the nineties? <laughs> no, in the sixties they opened the Illinois State Lottery. No, they didn't. When was the Illinois? Hey Google. When was the Illinois State Lottery opened? On the website IllinoisLottery.com, they say. Since 1985, the Illinois Lottery has contributed over $24 billion to the Common School Fund to assist K-12 public schools. Do you want a little more context? No, thank you. Um, <laughs> hold on. Are you fucking serious, okay. man? Yeah, I am. I was a kid when that thing opened? Yes. I was interviewing Frank Schweiss when that opened. And then when I got to Florida, they had a oh, lot of... Oh, no, 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 no. 
I'm sorry. I'm looking this up. I don't believe Google. I don't believe that, what I just heard. Here's what I'm reading right now on Google, by the way, which I just said I don't believe. Okay. <laughs> I'm like a walking limerick. Word. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a walking, talking dichotomy, okay? It's just like, I don't believe that. Let me look it up on that again. Okay, here's what I'm getting on, on the site. July 1st, 1974. The Illinois lottery began operations July 1st, 1974. The lotteries in the United States were confined to areas in the Northeast and Midwest. 74. Thank you. Everybody's confirming this with me. Michael, Tony Johnson. Thank you, guys. 74. I never bought a ticket in yeah. 1974. 74. Okay. I never bought a ticket in 1974 or any in the 70s. <laughs> Didn't know they existed. Of course, I didn't go out of the house much. <laughs> Should do okay. Endangered species. Listen to this. Listen to this craziness. Should do a crime story watch and review. It's a great show, and the series is on YouTube. Would be a lot of fun. Hey guys, I got a I got a message. We did a show a few weeks ago. I got a message from Dennis Farina's son. Is his name Joe? Joe Farina? Is that right? Correct. Okay. And he wrote me and said that we said some things incorrect about his father and he wanted to come on the show and, and speak for his dad because, you know, so we invited him on the show on the mob vlog and we haven't heard anything back from him. We haven't him heard back. a word since, but we did some no, research. It's like a week ago. Yeah. I mean, we sat and researched, we watched some interviews with them. We're like, yeah, let's have him on and talk to him. It'd be great. Um, but yeah, that's that. Yeah. But you know what the good thing is? I got myself an interview coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got an interview. Not an interview. A, a exploratory conversation meeting. Let's just leave it at that. So, um, new Tell business. The folks about it. Tell the folks yeah, about it. Yeah, they want to hear about this, the, the, the secret. I, I'm no, starting tell a them what tour. it is. I'm starting a new tour. So we got the Vegas crime tour. We got the Vegas mob tour. We got the haunted Vegas tour. We got the Good Springs ghost hunt. And I'm going to start the Vegas video game tour. Now, I, some of you know I like the video game. It's one of my things. I'm like, really, it's a, it's a hobby. It's something I enjoy doing. I have my whole life. And there are 74 video games that are set in and around Las Vegas, starting with Trinity, which is about nuclear explosions. Then it goes to Leisure Suit Larry and the Lounge Lizards which is about a 40-year-old virgin trying to get some prostitutes in Las Vegas. And the bar he goes into is called Lefties. Do you think that's a coincidence? That came out in 1987, the video game, <laughs> Infocom. Okay, so anyway, there's a game called Fallout New Vegas, and, um, and you start in Good Springs, and you go around the Prim and up into Vegas, and some businesses that really exist are in the video game, and even people that really exist are in the video game. And it sold 10 million copies worldwide, which means it's probably been played by 40 or 50 million people. And uh, it's a cult following that goes to this video game. So we're starting that. And I get, I get Bethesda Studios is like this gigantic, it's like Universal Pictures or something, you know. And uh, and, and we're going to talk about doing some, doing using, some, it's going to be interesting, Red. I like to talk I, about I it after it. my meeting. Yeah. Now, the like alternative to, to that, Adam's been talking to me about, You've heard of sing-alongs, haven't you? Where people sing along? Yeah. Well, Adam wanted to do a drink along where we drink and, I, and, get, to, and get stupid on the air. Well, let's have, have a drink along instead of a watch party. Yeah, let's have a drink party, right? Drink for just sit there and see who can drink the most. We'll play that game. But Roxanne, you don't have to do, 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 do. Roxanne. You know what I mean? And I swore I'd never sing ever again, dude. And I just did it again. Okay, so. You swear a lot. That's I all. said, I never got to sing again on air because I sound like a cat screeching, you know, like, a, anyway. Yeah. Every time they say Roxanne, you got you to gotta take a drink. Every time they say Roxanne, we'll listen to the song over and over until who one of us guy? Who was that guy who played Eddie Murphy, I think, was it? Eddie Murphy? No, 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 no. That movie was Steve Martin. No, the movie Roxanne? I, I, he was Roxanne, but he used to sing, uh, Eddie Murphy used to sing that song in 
The name of the movie, folks. Somebody help me out here. Beverly Hills Cop. No. He was uh, with Nick, Nick Nolte. He was with Nick Nolte and he was um it's hey, a Google, place in California, San Francisco. He was with Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy. Sure. To help you with that, I need your permission to allow assistant personal results on this device. You can change this in assistant oh settings. God. Never mind. Never mind. 48 hours. They're telling us, all right? They're faster than Google is right now. Endangered Species, Bobby Bag of Donuts. Called That's 48 right. Hours. 48 hours. That was the That's movie. And Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy was listening with his headphones saying, Roxanne, Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> Very funny. <laughs> John McShane, Rainbow Six Vegas. That's correct. That's one of the 74 games. So is Call of Duty Ghost. You go through the Luxor shooting it up. San Andreas, GTA, San Andreas. That's also go through Vegas. And uh, Nevada Trucking, that's a, one of the newer games. That's set in Vegas. And the Gran Turismo, which is the newest game set in Vegas, you race through Vegas. And that's in VR. Yeah, so that's up my alley, man. You look around, <laughs> you're the damn car, and you're like, <laughs> what? Anyway. Maybe if I have a faster internet, I'll get into it. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you get a VR headset, we'll hang out in uh, VR and we'll go shoot bugs. That's what I like to do, shoot <laughs> bugs and guardians of the front line. Oh, man, I'm like a galaxy guardian. Anyway, um, so so uh, this has been fun. Oh, my God, Luminous Grin, you got a great idea. We'll watch Casino and we'll take a drink every time we hear the F word. <laughs> no. Four hundred. No, I can't do that. Four hundred twenty-two point <laughs> four drinks per minute on average. Whoa! Uh -uh. Fall down after the first five minutes of that. <laughs> you didn't even. You wouldn't even get through back home years ago. Ten minutes in, you wouldn't even get that far. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, mm. man. I'll tell you what a day. All right. Well, it's oh, been fun. Only really good for forty shots, guys. <laughs> Oh my God, Joe Pesci will kill you with the alcohol poisoning. No kidding, Mad Attack. That's that, that's the damn truth. It's Joe Pesci's fault. Uh, there's something about the Sicilians and the F word. Yeah, well, yeah, something about them. So, anyway, guys, hit the like button. Um, be sure, be sure Wait, to hit it. I need all yeah. the help I can get. Subscribe if you don't get the subscribe. Hey, Red, you got an announcement to make. How many viewers do you have now? Subscribers? Yes, a, a big announcement to make. We finally made 3,000 subscribers. There's actually huh. 3,000 sub subscribers to the channel, and I want to thank all of you. I want to thank every one of you. I not only enjoy you, I not only enjoy, you must enjoy me because you, you tune in, you subscribed, and I really am grateful and happy. It made my day this morning when I looked up, I got up and I said, I can't believe it. The 3000 number. So that's awesome. I, I flipped it over. Thank you. Congratulations. One all. Really. That's good. Wait till you hit 10,000. That's going to be, that'll be big. Adam <laughs> Flowers, I lost all my money at the casino tour. No, I think that the, the next tour after the video game tour is done, I think I'm going to do the Las Vegas brothel tour. And we'll visit the grave of the unknown hooker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got those kids over there. Those kids over there in Pahrump. They're right. They got all the brothels over there. You know what they call those kids that, that are born over there? No. Brothel sprouts. <laughs> all right everybody it's been fun red it's been a good time you uh have a great day buddy and uh we'll see you next wednesday next Thank wednesday you, we'll be back it'll yes. be fun and uh we'll have a, we'll have and a i'll see you if you follow. tune in if you guys tune in i'll be with uh jimmy calandra and jimmy calandra uh, for on his channel check on, it out yep on sunday and it'll be in the evening time Somewhere around six Eastern time, maybe seven okay. Eastern time, but it'll be so in the like, evening time. And I'll definitely let you know in advance. 
I mean, I'll tell you guys. I'll put it on Facebook so you can see it. Awesome. And maybe you'll pass right. it around. Tune in. Check out Jimmy Calandra with uh, with uh, Red Wimet. Have a great day, guys. The combination of the videotapes and we Met's testimony resulted in the conviction of two men on extortion charges. One of them was Frank Schweiz, known in syndicate circles as the German, a feared mob terrorist and a suspect in a number of gangland murders. He was described to me by other outfit individuals as uh, the most feared hitman. And uh, as he said to me, my reputation precedes me, son.